Hey, what's going on developers? Welcome to the Sakura Dev channel. In this video, we are going to create a custom login page for next auth package inside our Next.js version 13 application. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, I open up a Next.js version 13 project, which is integrated with the next auth package. But before moving forward, I want to mention that this is not a detailed video about next auth. So if you're not familiar with the next auth, I highly recommend you to watch my other video, which is about the how to set up the next auth package with Next.js version 13. And as I mentioned, I've already set up the next auth with this project so we can quickly go forward to create our custom login page. So before doing that, let me show you what we have here. In the pages directory and API, we have an auth directory and inside it, we have the next auth configuration file. So in this file, I've added the credentials provider into the providers of the next auth. So as you know, with the credential provider, we can authenticate our user with a username and password. So here we have the authorized method, which takes the username and password inside an object called credentials and then inside this function we have to authenticate our user so in my case i keep the user list inside a backend database so here i have to send a post request to this backend api slash auth slash login route and then inside the body of the post request I send the username and password which are extracted from the credentials object which is fed into the authorized function. And then if the post request returns the user data, it means that the user is authenticated so we return the user into the session of the next auth or else we just return null which means that the user is not authenticated. And then inside the app directory, first of all, we have a providers component, which wraps its children inside a session provider that comes from the next auth slash react. So in this way, all the children inside the session provider can access to the session of the next auth with the use session hook. And then inside the root layout of our application, we just wrap all the pages and components of this application inside the providers component that we just defined. And also here in the root layout, we have an app bar component. So if I go to the app bar component, you can see that it's just a header section, which has an, a link to the home page and also a login button. So in the login button, first of all, we read the session from the use session hook which comes from the next auth slash react and then check if the session that user existed which means that the user is now logged in into our application we just show the username and then show a sign up button which in the unclick event of this button we call the sign up function which comes from the next auth slash react and otherwise, if the user is not existed in the session of the next auth, which means that the user is not logged in into our application, we just show a sign-in button. And in the on-click event of this button, we call the sign-in function, which again comes from the next auth slash react. Now let me talk about a little more about the sign-in function of the next auth. We can call the sign-in function in two ways without any arguments or with arguments. So if we call it without any arguments, just like this, it just sends the user into the login page. We can also call the signing function with arguments. So if we call the signing function with these two arguments, the credential string as first argument, which determines that we are using the credentials provider and then pass an object which contains the user and password, it calls the authorized function in the next auth configuration file. And if I go back to the VS code, and here in the login button, you can see that we just call the sign in function without any argument, which means that it just sends the user into the login page. So now let me run the server.
If I click on the sign in button here, it just sends us to the login page that is created by the next auth package. So if I put my username and password and click on the sign in, you can see that now the user is logged in and the name of the user is now on the app bar. But what if we want to have a custom login page? So stay with me until the end of this video and you will find how to create a custom login page and how to configure the next auth to send the user into the custom login page instead of that simple login page that is created by itself. Okay, let's do that. So I go to the VS Code and the first thing I want to do is to go to the next auth configuration file and after the provider section, I'm going to define an object called pages and inside it we can define the route for the custom login page. So the route for the sign in is going to be slash off slash sign in. So obviously this route is not existed in our application. So I go to the app directory and create this route. So here I'm going to create a auth directory and then inside it I'm going to create a sign in directory. And then inside it, I'm going to create the page.tsx. So here, first of all, I'm going to create a functional component and call it the login page. Okay, let's save this and here let's sign out and again sign in. And you can see we are headed to our custom login page instead of that simple login page that is created by the next app itself. So let's complete this login page. So first of all, I'm going to create two user f, one for the username and the other for the password. So for the sake of time, I just paste them and let's import the user from the React. So we have the username and password. And then let's copy and paste the class name for this parent div. And inside this parent div, I'm going to create another div which contains the inputs for the username and password. Let's put the class name for it. And then inside it, I'm going to define two text box. So let's import the text box from the element folder, which is here in the components slash elements. And here we have a button element and also a text box. As you can see, it's just a label and also a text input with a bunch of Tailwind CSS. And you can use it in your own project if you want. So here in the login page, you can see that in the username text box, in the onChange event, we set the username useRef to the value of this text box. And also we do this with the password text box. And after these two text boxes, we just put a button here. Let's import it. And its caption is login. And the onClick event of this button, we call the onSubmit function. So we haven't defined the onSubmit function yet. So let's define it. So I'm going to say const onSubmit. It's going to be an async function. And then inside it, we are going to say const result equals to await. And then call the signing function from the next path package. And here, instead of just calling the sign-in function without any argument, we have to pass two arguments. The first one determines which provider we are going to use. So obviously here we are going to use the credentials because we are going to authenticate our user with username and password. And then pass an object that contains the username and password. So I set the username to the username useref dot current and also the password to the pass useref dot current. And here we can define two other properties. The first one is redirect and set it to true, which determines that after the sign in function is complete, we redirect the user into a certain page that we define here. So we define the callback URL and set it to our home page. So these two properties determines that when the sign in function is complete, then redirect the user into the home page. So now if I save this and go back to the browser, it says we have a user inside the 
page.tsx file and this is a server component so let's mark it with the use client and let's save this and it says use ref is not defined so let's refresh this and the error is gone go to the home page and if I click on the assigning button here you can see that we are headed to the custom login page and if I put my username and password and and click on the login button we can see that the signing functionality is completed and we are headed to the home page and here we can see that the name of the user is now on the app bar so in this way we have successfully created a custom login page and also configured the next auth to call the custom login page instead of that simple login page that is created by itself so let me quickly review what we have done here First of all, in the next auth configuration file, we have to define the path for our custom login page. So in this case, we set it to slash auth slash sign in, and then go to the app directory and create a route for slash auth slash sign in. And then here inside the page, we have created a client component, which takes the user and password from the user. And then inside the on click event of this login button we call the on submit function and inside the on submit function we just call the sign in function which comes from the next off slash react with these two arguments the first argument determines the type of provider that we are going to use and in this case we use credentials provider and in the second argument we pass the username and password of the user and then we say after the completion of the signing function, we direct the user to this URL that we have defined. In this case, we set it to our homepage. And yeah, I think that's it for today. And if you liked the video, please hit the like button and stay tuned for my next video. Bye-bye.